I want to model differential equations like no one ever could. At these planes, I have the best. I make no clients for good. I will travel across the campus, searching far and wide. Each fifty-two to, to understand the power that's inside. The face plane, gotta sketch him. It's oh. quite easy. I know it's my destiny. The face plane, oh steady thing. So zero for the rain. The face plane, gotta sketch him. Oh. I'm not so pure. Through them we will find the cure. The X, D, T, and the Y, too. The face plane! Gotta sketch them all! Gotta sketch them all! The face plane! Hi, I'm Benj. And I'm Anne. Today, we will be talking about the backbone of mathematical modeling, the differential equation. Synonymous to headache for many first-year university students, the differential equation is not actually a difficult tool to use. Rather, it can be extremely useful in many different situations. A system of differential equations models how some quantities change over time. An interesting part is that a plot can be made called a phase plane that describes the motion of the system based upon current values with no necessity for time information. More about that later. In general, a differential equation shows dependence of various derivatives of a quantity on each other or the quantity itself. A well-known example is with motion. If we have an equation for an object's current position, we can plug in a time value to determine where it is at any given time. What if we want its rate of change of position? Taking the derivative of position gives us velocity, or rate of change of position. Now picture a system where the change depends on the current value, as in a first order kinetic reaction. The rate at which hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and oxygen is dependent on how much hydrogen peroxide is present. Since this is a single differential equation, we could draw a phase line to show what would happen when we started with any given concentration of hydrogen peroxide. If the system becomes more complicated, a phase plane is a more useful tool when two variables show their dependence on each other. We will be using a phase plane to model our main topic for this presentation. The SIR, an abbreviation of Susceptible, Infected, and Removed, is a very versatile epidemiological model for many different types of contagious infections and diseases. Epidemiologists use the SIR, among other tools, to determine the impact of a disease on a population. Factors such as how easily it can be spread and how long it takes to recover are plugged into the model to ascertain how disastrous an outbreak could be. When dealing with sexually transmitted infections, it is often the case that immunity does not develop after the disease is cured. Thus, the recovered infected are once again susceptible. Here is the system of differential equations that we will be using to model an STI outbreak. This system probably looks extremely complicated. Here is the breakdown of each part. DS by DT refers to the rate of change of people in the susceptible category. Alpha S shows the birth rate of susceptibles. Gamma is the chance that the child of an affected is born infected. Thus, 1 minus gamma is the chance that it will be born susceptible. So if we multiply a birth rate beta by 1 minus gamma and the number of infected, we see the amount of susceptibles born from infected parents. Very similarly, eta is the chance that one susceptible and one infected parent will have an infected child. So 1 minus eta is the chance that a susceptible will be born. Epsilon is the chance of pregnancy resulting from sexual behavior between an infected and a susceptible when 1 minus eta and epsilon are multiplied by both the number of susceptibles and infected. The number of susceptibles born to one susceptible and one infected parent is given. Nu represents the recovery rate of infecteds, which is multiplied by the number of infecteds to determine the number of newly recovered susceptibles. Mu represents both the chance that a susceptible and an infected will have sexual relations as well as the chance of infection resulting from this behavior. 
Finally, iota is the chance of death of a susceptible individual. DI by DT is the rate of change of people in the infected category. As mentioned earlier, gamma is the chance of the child of an infected couple becoming infected, and beta takes into account the chance of a sexual encounter as well as the chance of pregnancy from said activity. Epsilon and eta likewise refer to a susceptible and infected couple having an infected child, and mu is the infection rate. Nu shows the recovery rate, and kappa shows the chance of dying with the infection. Since we included birth terms, which allowed us to put much more detail in terms of children being born with or without the infection, as well as a regular uninfected death rate, we decided that a removed category would be unnecessary, since it would just show the overall number of people who have died and would not be very useful. Null clines are points, or locuses of points, where one or more of the two quantities do not change. To determine null clines, we set each differential equation equal to zero. Solving these gives us these. Now, draw these null clines as dotted lines on the graph. The s null clines are represented here by vertical lines, showing that there is no change in the s quantity. Note that for this phase sketch, we set the birth rate equal to the death rate. Otherwise, the null cline at i equals zero would actually be a curve. Similarly, the i null clines are represented by horizontal lines, showing that there is no change in the i direction. Where two null clines in different components meet, we get a steady state. A solution that reaches a steady state will terminate at that point, as both quantities will cease to change. Here are our steady states. Whether a steady state is considered stable or not depends on the definition of stable. For the purposes of this presentation, we will loosely define stable as meaning that a small deviation in the position from the steady state will result in the solution moving into the steady state as opposed to a small disturbance resulting in diverging from the steady state. Our steady states are all along the s-axis, since when there are no infected, all deaths come from natural causes and thus we get a line of y equals births minus deaths, in this case equals zero. The steady states to the left are unstable, and the ones on the right are stable, as indicated in the sketch. This is because of the direction of the y vector being upward on the left and downward on the right. A sketch of the phase plane like this one is very informative for understanding the system, but if we want to apply it to a real situation, then we must use a finite difference engine. Using a computer program such as Microsoft Excel, we can calculate an approximation to a solution in the system using finite differences. This means that we act as if the rate of change during each time step is constant, allowing us to numerically solve the differential equation system. Using smaller time steps will result in a closer approximation. Differential equation models can be made as complex or as simple as the creator desires. For example, we decided to consider a system not just with a fixed population, but one with natural births and deaths occurring continuously. To make the model more complex, one could add seasonal dependence to the birth rates. An even more complicated addition would be considering males and females separately, as many diseases have a different chance of infection if the susceptible partner is male or female. This means that just about every model will have limitations based on the assumptions we make while creating the model. We, we love, love you, Mark and Eric. Eric.